Hello everyone, Dr. Ames here. This time I'd like to talk to you about stereotype formation. Um, forming a stereotype is a four-step process, as you can see here, categorizing, inferring, forming expectations, and maintaining. And here I'm talking about stereotypes about people and groups of people. Of course, we could have stereotypes about events and places and things like that, uh, but really what concerns us in the workplace are stereotypes about people. Uh, everyone holds stereotypes. Uh, the definition of a stereotype is an individual set of beliefs about the characteristics or the attributes of some group of people. And we all may have a slightly different take on those, that sort of information. Uh, we do have a problem with stereotypes is that there does seem to be a kernel of truth somewhere lost in all of that. Uh, and so they appear to be not necessarily negative, that maybe the stereotype really is positive because you see that kernel of truth. Well, the kernel of truth is generally not true. It's a false assumption. Quite often it's, it's uh, an unfounded belief. But let's talk about how stereotypes about people really happen here. Um, like I said, everyone does hold them. And so where do these come from? They come from culture, they come from our family and peers, the way we've been raised, they come from our life experiences and so forth. Now, the one thing to say about a stereotype is that it's a schema. It's one of those cognitive categories we create about people, places, events, things like that, and where we store information. The problem is that when we deal with a schema about people, that we don't update the schema. And that is the reason that the stereotype is so hard to dispel because people simply use their selective perception to block out anything they don't think is true or they don't want to hear. So let's just work through these steps and talk about what it means to hold a stereotype. Um, it is a natural function of the brain to use schemas in these cognitive categories to store information. So a stereotype is really uh, a type of schema. It's a mental shortcut uh, that helps us retrieve information quickly and to deal with the information in a way that will help us deal with that uh, complexity of life. Um, but the problem with, like I've said, with stereotypical schemas is that they're not maintained, they're not updated, they contain generally untruthful or negative information about people. So let's look at the first step. We categorize groups of people as having similar criteria. And so we look at a group of people and we just assume that what we've seen is what all people in that group do. That's their behavior. And so this often comes from observation or things that we've heard or media influences. And those things may be not in, uh, may not be accurate. So we categorize first, we apply these criteria to a group of people. And then the next step is that we take that categorization and infer that it implies to absolutely everybody in that group that they are all alike. There is no individuality and that you can't predict the behavior of any given person depending on what your stereotypical thinking is about them. So we categorize a group of people according to some common information and then we infer that they are all alike in it. Uh, the problem here becomes that we use these stereotypes, these beginning budding stereotypes in our schemas to form our expectations about the people in any given group. And we do expect them all to act alike and according to our mental script in that schema. Um, and so we categorize, we infer, and then we expect it. And what happens when we see something that doesn't go according to expectations, that the person in the group who we have a strong stereotype acts in a way that says, that's not true about my group, I'm different. Uh, we tend to ignore that. We do not update our schemas. And so therefore we end up maintaining our stereotypes. We, we uh, end up maintaining these incorrect depositories of information because our selective perception is in play here. We don't wanna hear anything that we've already made up our mind about. And stereotypes contain information that we have attached some emotion to, that we have a very strong belief or feeling about. And so when it comes to updating our schema, like we might do with any other schema, like going to a restaurant, 
Uh, today, we've all changed our schemas a bit because of the pandemic, right? With the restaurant, we don't do things according to the script that's in our mind of what should happen when we go to a restaurant. It's all changed. Well, the difference is we are always updating about common things in our lives, except for some reason when it comes to people and groups of people. We tend not to update, even when we see that the information is incorrect. We would rationalize, we would make excuses for ourselves why we don't update and correct our information. We might say, oh, that's a rare occurrence. It, it, it's really not the norm. We make excuses for it and so forth. And then we end up maintaining that schema, uh, basically to protect our minds from information overload. That's the reason we form schemas in the first place. The problem with the stereotypical ones in our minds is that they have that emotion attached to them. And so they're very powerful. And because of our selective perception and the way it works, we do not take the mental energy it would take to update that schema, to change our views. So the problem with stereotypes begin right away is we start to apply this information to groups or individuals in groups, uh, when certainly we should realize that everybody is unique, uh, is a unique individual. So these stereotypes that we hold about groups of people uh, really have a real life effect on them. Uh, and we're talking about groups of people that we know, women, older people, ethnicities of all type, disabled people, gender differences, children, things like that. And so when we see that information that goes counter to what's in the schema, we tend to discard it. Although we might be thinking in the back of our minds it's correct, it contradicts our schema, we move on, it takes mental energy to update our information, we don't often do it. And it's because stereotypes are slightly different than most schemas in the fact that they have very strong emotions and beliefs uh, attached to them. So let's take a look at some of the contemporary ones that we're gonna run into the most in the workplace. Certainly sex role stereotypes. America uh, as a society is very patriarchal. It's always been a man's world. And indeed, it's not just in America, it's around the world. If you think about it, there are no societies run by women that are matriarchies. We just simply don't have that. So sex role stereotypes um, are those about the genders and relations between people and how men do things and how women do things and what we expect from each other in, uh, in life in general. Um, the most notable, the notable stereotype here, sex role one is about women in leadership roles. And much of this stereotyping also comes right out of culture. So the depth and strength of the stereotype is going to be reinforced by the, the type of society that you live into. All societies, just like all people, have some sort of gender-based expectations. And when people don't live up to the role we have expected of them, we think, oh, you're not acting normal. You're acting out of the average. Um, and so this thinking, uh, carries over into the workplace. And that's why we talk about these things because the workplace is certainly a reflection of society in general. So we also have age stereotypes. Uh, these stereotypes reinforce age discrimination and we've had to have legislation to move us beyond these uh, age related discriminatory roles. For instance, we have the ADEA which says you can't discriminate in hiring and promotion uh, against a person who's 40 years of age or older. And we've removed mandatory retirement age and things like that from corporate life and so forth. But we have a lot of stereotypical thinking out there about older workers, for instance. And much of it is completely disputed by research, but age stereotypes are held by not just younger workers, but also by older workers as well about each other. And they do have a significant impact on organizational culture. What we can do to dispel some of this is to try and get some generational cohort knowledge to apply it, but not to let that knowledge itself become stereotypical and how we expect everybody to behave and so forth. We also have racial and ethnic stereotypes of all types. Um, there are many ethnic stereotypes out there. and Most of them are simply harmful. Uh, the problem here with the maintenance part of forming the stereotype is the strongest. So it is just so hard for people to change their stereotypical thinking when it comes to ethnicity and groups of people. We also have very strong stereotypes uh, related to disabled persons. Um, 
and we don't really have the time to go into these in depth like we would. These are topics that we generally talk quite a bit about in cross-cultural management and so forth. But the thing to remember here, I would say, is that disability stereotypes, ethnic stereotypes, they are powerful. They're generally quite negative and they're generally quite inaccurate about people. So as a manager, you want to get as much diversity training as you possibly can get so that you can avoid these pitfalls yourself, so that you can rise above it and really make the best personnel decisions and have the best interpersonal communication that's available out there. Okay, folks, that's what I wanted to talk about this time.